God forever and forevermore. I, I was listening to that song. It's a wonderful song, because God's faithfulness. But you know, God will be as faithful to you as you will allow him to. He will be. It's really not up to God to determine what you're going to receive from him. It's really up to you. God's reservoir is, is, all, is wide open. God's not holding nothing back from anybody. When Jesus said, it is finished, when that veil flung open, you, that access us to all that God is. And, and, the, um, and, and what you receive out of God is really up to you. So there's no, there's no, God's not allowing things out to you. You get a little bit. I learned some things over the years. Find somebody that's older than you and talk with them. I've, I've, I've learned a few things over the years. Many, many years ago, and I didn't know all. I didn't know, oh, dear Lord, I just didn't know. But I just, but the Holy Spirit was there, and he, he's the teacher, and that's who we, that's who we just really, who we're going to be t talking about and teach about in these next lessons. Yeah, but, but, but by the Spirit of God, and I didn't, I didn't really realize that, but that's okay. You don't have to know everything in your head. But, but I, it was a, there was a sellout on the inside of me. In the neighborhood about 45 years ago or so, it was just a sellout inside of me. I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't, I just were owed me absolutely nothing. I didn't care a thing about it. All I wanted was God. I wanted just as much of God as I could have. That was the desire inside of me. I was, I mean, I wouldn't let nothing distract me from that. And, and just, just that thought and that idea inside of me caused me to just set up, it set a course in my life that dear God, I wish I could tell you all that I have experienced as a result of that. You would probably think I'm just bragging. But God's faithfulness will, will, will be as much as you will allow it to be. Here is the thing that you have to understand. When you sell out to God, don't get in no hurry. God's not in a hurry. Dear Lord, he is not, he is not in a hurry, no. He's not in a hurry. He's just, you just got to just sell out and that's it. It didn't matter to me. I'm just, I'm testifying about me. It didn't matter. It, nothing mattered. Nothing in this world mattered to me. The only thing that mattered to me is I just wanted to do the will of God. That's all I wanted. I wanted God. I just wanted God. It's in everything I went after. I wanted God. And that was my total focus. My, I wasn't distracted in this world. It couldn't distract me. It had nothing to distract me with. I'd seen it. Been there and done that. You know, but, but I, I wasn't distracted. There was no distraction. I wasn't distracted by cars and houses and nothing. The thing that's usually to mess people up. You know what I mean? People, money. You know what I mean? What I can buy. What I can do. You know, position. I didn't, I didn't care about any of it. I, in fact, I remember, to be honest, I remember the last, before I re retired out of the military, the last promotion I got, I didn't care whether I got it or not. I'll be honest with you, that was the truth. They, they told me to go before the board and to, to, to apply for the board. Well, I went. But I, didn't, I wasn't sitting there trying to, trying to tell them what they wanted to hear. I told them what I wanted to tell them. And bless God, they honored me for that. You know, when, when you give your life to God, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different world, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't running after nothing. This world didn't owe me nothing. I was, I was just running after God. I'm just trying to show you how it is. And that's something that has to be, has, you have to decide. You can't be in no hurry. And you can't be wondering when it's going to happen. Don't worry about that. Because, see, once everything that comes from God to you is going to be secondary to God. But see, if you, if, when you start going after stuff and things, it's going to be primary to you. You know, the world operates that way. They'll walk all over top of you to get up to the next step. Don't care nothing, they don't care nothing about you. It's all, it's all, that's all them or nothing. You know, what I say the world is. Well, 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 but when you come to God, it's different. It's different. When you focus on God and decide, I want to live for God. I just want to live for God. Don't worry about the stuff. It, Jesus already told us how it's going to work. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Amen. That's the truth. Amen. 
A lot of stuff I don't know when he got. They just say, I just looked at him. There it is. Well, I use it if we get a chance. You know, but I'm telling you the way it is. I, I'm, this is the way it is. Find somebody that's older than you and talk to them. Amen. You don't know enough. You're not old enough to know anything. You follow it? No, not really. I know we think we're smart. But, but find somebody that's been somebody that's walking with God. Don't just talk to anybody. Find, some, find somebody that's older than you that's walking with God. And then listen to them. They can, they can tell you things. But I'm telling you, this, this just, just the faithfulness of God. I, I have no words for it. I, I have no words for God's faithfulness. And what he, uh, you know, it's amazing. And here's what I've learned. One of the things I've learned, we're going to move on. Uh, I've learned most of the stuff that we're wasting a whole lot of time with is really nothing. And God will give it to you. He'll throw it in there and give it to you. And you'll have it before you even know you got it. He will. The thing that you are reaching after and going after, he'll give them to you. I know it's the truth because number one, he said so. You don't have to, you don't have to try to, you know, to, to hustle and, you know, get stuff, things, position, all that. You, you don't have to do that. Just be content right where you are. Be content and faithful right where you are. Be content and faithful right where you are. Amen. And I guarantee it'll happen. It, it'll, it'll, I, listen, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there, dear God. I've, I've, I've been some places and seen a few things. I've been around a couple of days. Yes, indeed. God is a good God. He's a, he's a, he's a good God. <coughs> we are, we're looking at, the, we are, we have been studying about the Holy Spirit and uh, I can't think of a better subject, really. Amen. Right off hand. Because that's what God's talking to us about. And the more I look at it, the bigger it gets. Amen. We have to understand that, you know, really understanding that um, people, people, you know, they say they, you know, talk about tough, how tough it is and all that, life and all that. that that's not real. That, that's, that's not real. That, that's not right. Uh, Think about the, the, the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved us. Listen, I don't care. God loves you. God loves you. And, and he wants the best for you. Th th please understand that. And he loves you in a way that you don't know about. He, he loves you. He loves you. And, and, and so his re the re whole redemptive plan of God was to come into this devil environment and rescue us. That's the whole coming of devil. That's what the whole coming of Jesus was about. When Adam separated himself from God through his own ignorance and sin, you know, then God devised a plan to restore us back to him. You don't know anything about living. This world is not living. This world is just, just hustling. That's all it is. It's a hustle. It's not living. God is life. He is life. And God will show you how, you don't know how to, you won't know how to live until you start, until you get a hold to God, until you connect with God. That's when you'll find out about living. But my point is God loved us and came to us. God so loved the world, the great classic scripture, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life, everything that's good. And Jesus came to give us that. It cost a bundle. It cost, it cost his life. That's how bad we were. That's how separated we were. And that's what it was required to get us back. It cost the life of Jesus. He died to get you and I back to where we belong. He came and he paid for us and then opened the door and invited us in. He didn't hog ties and make anybody come in. He, paid, he made the provision for us, opened the door, and sent out the invitation. And the great invitation is what we, call, what we call today the Great Commission. That is the invitation to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Go ye into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. If you don't believe, he'll be condemned. Go preach this. That's the invitation. And then when you, when you receive the invitation and you come in, if you don't receive the invitation, you just keep walking like a frog. You just keep walking. Every time you make a track, you just hit the ground. 
But, but, but if you receive the invitation, then God will give you life. Amen. And you can have life. And then, not only that, but Jesus, when he came and provided for us so that we could come back to the Father, he went back to heaven. Yes. He said, I'm going back home. Yes. He came down here, and dear God, he, did, he deserved to go back. Because after what he did, took him 33 years. Dear God, it may not seem like a long time to some of you older folks, but I tell you what, it's a long time yes. for what he had to go, for what he went through the pressure and opposition that he went through. And that last stroke that he, I mean, that, that cross, dear God, there was something. No man could have done that. No man could have done that. And he went through that. You know, you think about that cross, and, and you know what I mean? You look at what happened to Jesus and the suffering that he went through, just the physical aspect of it. When you look at the physical suffering that he went through, average man would not have, would have, would have passed out way before. He didn't know he made it. He didn't just pass right out. But Jesus was conscious throughout this whole thing. Come on, dear God, all of that beating and ridicule and, and shame. We don't even preach about the shame. The shame that he went through. Took the man's clothes away from him. You know what I mean? And then nail him to a tree. Come on, I, I, don't, I, I can't even fathom that. And nail him to a tree. But he's conscious through all of this. And then you hang there. And he's just hanging there, hanging there, hanging there. And they're still railing at him, railing at him. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to just be crucified, but dear God, there are people, a bunch of people railing at you at the same time. Yeah. And not only, but he, he suffers the, the mental anguish. Yeah. You know, from the inside, oh God, everything I did was good for these people, and they don't like me. On, he suffered all of that. And loved us right on, right on, right on through, and died for us. And then, and then, then went to, then, 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 then the fan really hit the fan because you, you and I know nothing about what happened when he went to hell. That's right. Amen. Dear God, into the region of the damned mm. to suffer yeah. judgment, sin judgment. Yeah. Three days of that. And God said, turn him loose. Amen. See what I mean? God turned him loose. And then he went, now he's in all of his glory. But the glory followed, the glory followed that. And that's kind of a pattern for us. You, 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 not, you don't have to do what he did, but it's a pattern. The frustration and the pains and the anguish that we have to encounter in this world system. But then after the, after the when the dust settled, will be in glory. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. And I say that to for, for as an encouragement because we, you know, we, we, you know, we think we're going through something. This is, you, you're not going through anything. Go through what Jesus, look at what Jesus went through. You know, we're always complaining about this and complaining about that and just whining and belly aching about everything but in nothing. And just going, you know, and then everything, you know, everything is hard, too tough, you know what I mean? Too, too, too wet, too dry, too cold, too hot, too something. No, we just, we just go on like that. We're just endless. It's endless. Right. You know, no, but that's nothing. That is nothing compared to what Jesus, but after all of this, it's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be too cold. It's not going to be too wet. It's not going to be too dry. It's going to be just right all the time. Oh, yeah. And you will be able to, re to receive it and, and enjoy it. You've, that's, it's, it's, like a, it's like a pattern. But I say that all to help us even now while we are, call ourselves going through. You know, we get the headache. We got the toothache. We got, we got a hangnail. We got this. We got that. And everybody got something. And we, and we, we let these things captivate our minds. But that's nothing. That is nothing. That is nothing but a distraction. It's all distraction. But here's what we're coming to. I want you to understand that God didn't leave us here by ourselves to deal with these distractions. He left himself here. Yeah. Holy Spirit. And you are going to have to understand that. You're going to have to get it from the word of God and you're going to have to receive him and then you're going to have to let patience have her perfect works as you develop and grow in him. This is not something you're going to do. You're not going to just come and get Holy Spirit and go spit and jerk for a few minutes and then everything is all over. It's not going to work that way. It's not going to work that way. It doesn't work that way. 
It doesn't work. You're going to make a decision to receive him, and then he will come and take up residence in you, and then you're going to grow in that. And this is where our Christians are having a problem. They don't have time to grow. They want to live the life that they're going to get after you grow into it. They want to live it before they grow into it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. You're going to have to walk. You're going to have to crawl before you walk. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to make that song sounds before anybody knows what you're talking about. It's, I'm telling you. Now, God calls this, he calls it, when he gives us the Holy Spirit, he calls it fruit of the Spirit. Yes. What is fruit? Fruit is a product that develops and grows on the fruit tree. It's fruit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit must develop in us in order for us to live and enjoy the benefits of his presence. Amen. And you're going to have to, allow, number one, see, see, many times we, 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 have, we have, I think we have misled people, uh, we, we have misled people by making people think, well, you just come get the Holy Ghost and it's all over. Amen. No, come get the Holy Ghost and we're just getting started. Amen. That's the launching point. That's first grade. That's kindergarten. And we, we have done that. I, I know we, we know, but, but we're learning. We're learning. I know in ages past, I've been around. I've been around a few days in the early days of the charismatic movement. You know what I mean? We, we, we Baptist, I grew up Baptist. We didn't, we didn't know anything about it. They didn't teach us about the Holy Spirit. So I went on. If I went on Pentecost, people, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, but they was preaching. They were preaching the Holy Ghost. They said, "Well, you know, once you get the Holy Ghost, that's it. That's just going to go." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll get you started. And that's when I found out, and I, read, and I found out, you found a whole lot of people, they had the Holy Ghost, and they're still, I said, what, they got the Holy Ghost? Yeah, they got it. I heard them talking in tongues. But the life that was following, I said, dear Lord, if he got the Holy Ghost, what's he doing there? What's he doing all that for? No, we had the idea to just get the Holy Ghost, and you just got to talk in tongues, and then it's all over. No, 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 it's not all over. You're going to grow in this. Why do you think, go, Google grow in the, in the Bible. See how many times you find it. Particularly in the New Testament. You have to grow in this, and we don't have time to grow. That's our problem. We have, we had, it's, 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 if it's not, we don't have time to make no fire. Stove get hot. And mama come in and knead bread and make the bread and put it in the oven and let it cook and then come in and eat. We don't have time for that. If, you know, if, it, if it's cold, just shove it in the microwave and, and I'm eating and gone. Never mind making no fire. Never mind cooking no bread. No, that's the mentality that we have. And we, 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 don't, we, 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 we stopped making fire a long time ago. I used to make fire in the morning for mother to come in the kitchen and, and make bread, knead bread with flour. She would start with the flour, you know what I mean, and buttermilk and baking powder and salt and baking soda and shortening. I know how to make bread. <laughs> and she makes you knead that bread. The buttermilk is the key. That's the key to good... See, even one of them, a company, they try to call them buttermilk biscuits. Yeah, yeah. But, but, and, but, and then, and then, knead it, and then roll it bread and roll it up and knead it and then, and then make them, she used to make her biscuits, but she didn't cut her biscuits. No, she just take the thing and squeeze a piece off a pizza and, and they always write the same size. Take that thing and put it in that pan and then slob in that oven. Man, you put some butter between that, dear Lord. You talk about it, you haven't had breakfast. You haven't had breakfast and you had some of them hot buttermilk biscuits. You know what I mean? With some, with some molasses and king syrup and fat back and ham and oh, my, my. I know it's full of cholesterol, I know. 
No. But we have a but but my point in saying all of that is that we have a fast paced mind today. And it works against us when it comes to developing in the things of God. We expect everything to work right now. I know, when, you know, here again, we, I, when, I, when I again found out about the Holy Ghost, I thought he would, people just running all over the country, running around everywhere trying to get somebody to lay hands on them to get healed. Yo, some of y'all remember what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Some of them had been in every healing line in the country. Still ain't that healed. They didn't know you need to grow in this. Now I, I know I, I know I, I've been in some lines. Listen, I'm 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 I'm, 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 I'm telling on me too. I, I've been in some lines. I've been in some lines, you know. But as, but after this, as, <laughs> when everything was said and done, I had to go back to this word. You see, God didn't design this for you to just run out to somebody's meeting, get hands laid on you, get your healing, get delivered from them devils and all of that, you know what I mean, and then just go on and live, just live happily ever after. It wasn't designed that way. And we need to understand that. And that's what the local church is supposed to teach people. That's why the local church is so important. The cr crusades was never designed for people to live off. See, I know I come up through the charismatic age. I come up when you know, we had crusades. Well, see, yeah, that, that's wonderful. Crusades are wonderful to introduce the things of God to the people. But the lo you're supposed, the people are supposed to feed out of the local churches. Amen. The crusade leaders are not going to come over your house and visit you when you get sick. You don't have them to hear them know you. You follow, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying. My whole point of saying all this, where everything that you need is in this book, and everybody got one. Yes, it's Holy Spirit is your helper. He is your comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Why don't we read that? Yeah, However, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. Do that sound like something instant? He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but he will, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He's going to guide you. He is your helper. Listen to what he says here. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another. Helper, please listen to what you're reading. What does a helper do? He helps you. That's not a complicated term. He will help you. He will help you. If you ask me to come and help you, I expect you to be doing it too. But now we, you know, we don't, no, 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 let's go get the man of God lay hand on this. No, Holy Spirit will help you. He is your helper. He will help you. He will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. That's what he will do. And the, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. To be taught, you have to be in the classroom. No, can you just pray? Phone ring. Thring. Can you pray? Yeah, I can pray. Can you? <laughs> no, really, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to it, it, it may almost sound funny, but I'm telling you, this is the way the church operates. I know I'm a pastor. Can you pray? We got this girl problem going on. We got this going. Now I'm not. That's, understand me. That's not been. I'm not. That's not belittling anything. You understand me. I'm trying to get us to understand. Yes. You know, the whole everything. In other words, if you notice, most much of what we do is none of it is tied to what God told us to do. It's not tied to what He told you to do. We are to grow in this. We don't sit around and, and, and watch TV until the devil show up and then call somebody to make him leave. It doesn't work that way. 
you have to develop and grow. And Holy Spirit is here on the earth to help you do that. He is to help you. He is your guide. He will guide you into all truth. Understand that. Jesus came. We are the sons of God. We are the ones that need to grow. And God sent us a tutor. It is, he is Holy Spirit in the earth to dwell with us, to guide us, to teach us how to be sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's here for. Yeah. He is not here to fix your problems when they're trying to show up. He is here to show you how to manage your own situation. That's what he's here for. And we have to submit to him. Number one, I'm supposed to tell you that he is. You're supposed to receive him and trust him to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Now, listen to me real carefully. Much of this is done, it's, it's already pre-programmed, if you will. I, if I can use that term, because you, you understand programming. The, the, the growth process that God has designed for his children in the earth is really, God has really pre-programmed it. All we have got to do is to tap into it and the pro it will start to work in us as we listen to him. Now, every believer in here, you, in here you know you need to pray and you need to read your Bible. You need to come to church. You need to be taught. You need to come to Bible classes. You need that. You say, I need all that and more. Yeah. Yeah. We have Bible classes on Thursday nights. We have Bible classes on Wednesday morning. We have Bible classes on Sunday morning. It's amazing to me how people, and that's a low priority on many people's, on many, on most, I would say, well, I don't want to say most. But that is not a priority on Christians. Sunday morning, Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, and Thursday evening seem not to be a priority for good Christians. And then they wonder why are things the way they are. They're going to get worse than that. Until you make it. A, why do you think God set this up? Do you think I come here on Wednesday morning because I don't have anything else to do? You think I come here on Thursday evening just because I just, I, just, I just got to go out there, boy, it's Thursday evening. You think I'm here on Sunday morning because, whoa, it's Sunday morning. I got to go, boy. That's what I'm called to do. So to me, it's not, number one, it's not, even a, it's not even a task to me. It's a way of life because it is accepted as my calling. And, it is, and the purpose of it is to feed the flock of God. I got that directly from the Bible. God told me to feed the flock of God, shepherd the flock of God by being an example unto them and teaching them, not lording over God's heritage, mm -hmm. but to love them, teach them, and show them how to live. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, what I, that's what my job is. But, but <clears throat> you're the one that's going to have to make it a priority. The people, you had to, you, if, if it's not a priority to you, if the mall is more of a priority than Bible class, then go to the mall. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out that that mall is bigger than it think, you think it is. No, come on. This is a fact. And if we don't, if, you, if you're not told this, then you'll continue to evade the very thing that's going to cause you to be successful. We try everything else to be, try every other way to be successful except the way that God has designed it to. No good. It's not going to work. There's not enough money to compensate for you going to Bible class. Not enough. There's not enough prestige to compensate for it. Now, here's what's going to happen. Go to Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit. Now, look at, look, at, look at just by virtue of the language. Fruit. What is fruit? Fruit is something that is, that is produced, it's developed and grows. Yeah. It develops and grows. 
Now, anybody that knows anything about gardening, it's always a time factor involved. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I know much about it. I know, I'm more, I know more about it than I probably need to know because I grew, I grew up on a farm. Dear God, I grew up on one of them things. And work don't end. <laughs> to work on the farm. Some kids have time to play. We didn't have no time for nothing but work. But we did get some downtime. I, we were, I didn't have tyrants for parent. <laughs> but my point is that when you understand fruit, fruit does not, you don't, the fruit, fruit has to develop and grow. First, you have to plant the fruit tree. You have to have, you have, to have, to have a fruit tree. Then the fruit tree, it takes time for it to get big enough to grow, to develop fruit. Amen. It's not going to grow fruit the same day you, same time you plant it, same year you plant it. It's going to get big enough, and it's going to have to develop. Now, and, 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 it, and you can't, it don't even grow fast. You cannot look at it and watch it grow. Amen. But that fruit tree, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna just take its time. It's gonna wait for the rain. It's gonna wait for the sun to come out. Then it's gonna wait for the fall. Then the leaves gonna crumble. Then it's gonna look like it's dead. You don't use it. Is that a fruit tree? Yeah. Don't look good. Well, I didn't tell you to walk by sight. It don't even look good. It looked like it's dead. Out there ain't a leaf in sight. And there's not a leaf in since January. Not a leaf in sight. Nothing green about it. It's dry. But in the spring, the sap rise. And she start turning, and then you know, the little, little things start coming out. You, they don't jump out overnight. It gradually go there and it just, then, 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 then all of a sudden, it's, then that's what we call pollen season. And, and, and the little buds comes out. And then when it comes time for that tree to produce fruit, let's just say it's an apple tree, and then, and then it's going to, you know, little, little blossom going to come out first. You say, is that apple tree? I don't see no apples. You don't know. You may see a little blossom. This is after she's been there for a while. Then a little blossom. And then at the end of that blossom, when, the, when the, all of the fuzz go off of that thing, and that, it looks like it's in the flower seem to fall away, there's a little, little bit of little old thing. It ain't hollow bigger than the end of your finger. At the base of the blossom. The blossom gone. Then that little apple sitting there. It'll just sit there and it'll, you know, you can't sit there and watch it grow. You just sit there and it, you know, it'll, it'll look like a, you ever try to watch a, a, a watch hand move? Particularly the short one. You got a large clock, you might be able, you might be able to see the long hand. But if watch the size of my watch, you ain't going to see it move. But it's moving. You can't see it. I'm trying to help us. We want to see progress. The spirit it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work this way, that red way. It, it takes time for it to develop and grow as it is nurtured. If it's not properly nurtured, it's gonna be, it's not even gonna be right. You say, Well, I know all of that. Well, you don't feed. It's neither not being nurtured, so what was that? you gonna get might get a little sapling, a little ball, a little hard, something that is too side to eat. You, you understand, you understand the process. I'm trying to show you the process. We have we're expecting God to just bless me, Jesus, bless me, dear God, hurry up and bless me, get me healed. I want my healing, I want this, I want that, I want this. No, it don't work that way. The fruit of the Spirit must be developed in you, and as a result of that, you learn to walk in all of the blessings that God has for you. Now let's watch this. Let's look at this. Look, look at uh, Galatians. Galatians, Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Wow, that's up front. Love. This is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a person that has been born again, has received Holy Spirit, and watch this. The fruit of the Spirit 
is a result of the spirit living inside of you and your feeding and then love will begin to manifest in your life. We see people, and we'll see mean, mean ones. I've seen some mean ones in church, but mean boy. They're mean. He said, well, don't be at it. They might go to church. They're not eating a thing. You know what I mean? And, and you're not going to con the Holy Spirit. You, you, the fruit's not going to just develop in you just where you got saved 10 years ago. No, no. You have to be the, the, the nurturing, the nurturing. You got to know somebody. Everybody needs to be a farmer. You are, you'll understand what nurturing means. Caring for plants, right water, temperature, all of this is the nurturing. And then eventually you will get fruit. Love is called the fruit of the Spirit. That's when you have been nurtured, when you've been trained, when you've been taught. Why do you think God put teachers in the body? To teach people so that they could be nurtured. And then love is not going to just happen to you. You don't, you're not, you don't walk in love just because grandma walked in love. It has to be developed in you. It is by the Holy Spirit that you receive that develops love inside of you. It's not just you could say, I just love in a way. And then that crowd, there's a crowd that comes and they come along and try to fake it. That won't work either. See, it's a, it's a surface operation. They're faking it. It's a beautiful apple, but it's a worm in that in there. Fake it. You can't fake this out. And then those that try to fake it, no, it has to be genuine. It has to come. And you just, you, you can't help it. You just mean. You can't help it. But how are you going to get rid of that mean? The only thing that's going to get rid, make you not be mean is that the word of God got to go inside. Holy Spirit has been given to you by God and the, and the fruit of the Spirit. That's why it's called the fruit of the Spirit. You're not going to get love without the fruit of the Holy Ghost. The world tries to fake that one out. They are taught love but they're not even saved. Never mind how I got the Holy Ghost. And they try to act like they love you. You don't love me. I'm going to give you a bargain. No, you're not. I know better than that. You know, I'm going to get, this is on sale. No, it's not. You try to get my money out of my pocket into your pocket. Has nothing to do with, you know, it's not love. If you think it's love, rub them wrong. Genuine love comes from the Holy Spirit that's inside of a believer. That's the only way you're going to find it on this earth. The only way, the only place you're going to find love on the earth is out of a believer that has the Holy Spirit. The, the world don't know nothing about love. The world knows nothing about love. I don't care how they try to fake it. I don't care what, how they try to say but they don't, it's not love. It's not love. It's not love. It's not love. The, the, the fruit of the, look at the word of God, but the fruit of the spirit is, and love is up front. The fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is love. Love is developed and grows in the heart of Christians that has the Holy Spirit inside of them. That's the only place you're going to find love on this earth at. You're not going to find it anywhere else. Because it's called the what? Fruit. It's the result of Holy Spirit living inside of a human. It comes from God. God is love. First John 4, read it over in First John. God, what? He is love. So where are you going to get love from? It can't come from nowhere. It ain't coming from the devil. He don't even know how to spell love. Love's going to only come. Listen, you can't fake love. You just can't say, I love you. The devil, get, the, the devil took that and, and went out in, in conning people. Some guy comes on and tells a little girl, I love you. No, you don't. You don't know what love is. 
But we, you know, we, we just throw it around. And, we, and then the Christians come along, pick it up and throw it around too. They don't know what it is either. Like giving a pig a Rolex. It's too valuable. Love comes from one place. Its source. God is love, and it's only going to come from God, and Holy Spirit is God, and he is now on the inside of me. That, my friend, is the only way that I'm going to love. Anything else is a counterfeit. When the devil transforms himself into an angel of light, you know he's just going to try to look like one. You will only find out what he is when you rub him the wrong way. You'll find out what he is. you find out what you got. See? Love's come from God, and, and, it's, and it's developed. It's, it's, it's not just some, it's God just don't grab an armful of love and throw it into you. Love develops and grows in us. That's genuine love. It develops and grows. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Love develops as a result of the Spirit, and it grows. And it's not, and, it's, and it doesn't, it does, there's no, it's not a speed thing. It's a gradual process. And then there's joy. Joy. Only comes, joy has, joy doesn't require your emotions. Joy doesn't require a, a perfect environment. Joy doesn't even require the sun to be shining. You can have joy in the middle of the snowstorm. Because joy is bigger than it. See, joy, see, that's, but that's only going to come from Holy Spirit that is living inside of us. See, you're not a good, you can't go to God as an unbeliever. You can't go to God and get joy. Well, number one, you're not even going to him. If you're not saved, you're not even going to him anyway. But you, can, you, you, can't, you can't have it. This is the children's bread. The fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit comes from the Spirit. And the only the children has the Spirit. Do you see how this is? See, I'm trying to show you. See, when the Bible says Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, he does that in a lots of ways. In our culture, he plasters himself on the billboard. He, that's not love. That's not joy. That's not peace. That is Satan transforming himself into an angel of light. The love and the joy that come from Holy Spirit is going to come from the inside of the children of God and from nowhere else. That's the purpose. That's Holy Spirit. That's why, that's why Jesus said, I'm going to send you another. I'm going to send the comforter to you. I'm going to send you. He is called the counselor. Hallelujah. He's your counselor. He gives you counsel. You see, and the, and the, and the see, and the how he does. See, when all of these fruits are developed in you, you are just something else. You are just something else when these fruits are developed in you. Now look at it. We got what? Love. We got joy. We have peace. Wow. Remember Jesus said, "My peace." He told the disciples, "He said, My peace I give unto you, yeah. not like the world. That stuff they got is not right. That's a counterfeit." I, my peace I give to you. My peace. My peace. The peace that comes from God. It comes, the way that you have the peace of God is that you have the Holy Spirit in you and the peace is developed in you. And now nobody can take it from you. Nobody can take that from you. Nobody can take that from you. Because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get it because you heard Reverend so-and-so. You got it because of the fact that the Holy Spirit is in you and you it developed in you. It's come from in your spirit. It comes out of you. Real peace comes out of you. Peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
the peace of and listen, you, you, this is this is a major fruit. You, 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 this is a major fruit, particular in certain environments where fear is raging. Fear runs on everybody except when you run up against somebody with PC. Don't go, don't go here, boy. I'm go there. Fear cannot. Fear can do absolutely nothing where there's an abundance of peace that's developing in your spirit. Fear can do. Fact, fear can do nothing. It can do absolutely nothing when there is the peace of God. What is peace? Freedom from all distress that is experienced as a result of sin. Peace is freedom from all of that. The peace of God. But where is it going to come from? Everybody want peace. Where is it going to come from? It's going to come from Holy Spirit that is inside of you and, and that you are nurturing and feeding on the Word of God and the life of God, and it develops in you. See, I know, I, I was a farmer. You have to plant the crop, and then you know we had to go back out there and we had to fertilize it. And then you got to water it. Dear Lord, all of this work, 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 work just to get the fruit. I know, I did it. Work, work, work. I know what work is. You had to work to do that. Why? Because you want the fruit? You want the fruit of peace? Then you're going to have to receive Holy Spirit and you're going to have to nurture and feed on the Word of God and then the fruit's going to develop. It's not going to just be dropped on you. It's going to develop in you. The fruit is going to develop in you. The fruit is going to develop in you. The fruit of peace is a fruit. Peace is fruit. Peace is fruit. A good talking, you can't get peace of, give people peace with just a good talking. You talk to them, yeah, they, they'll look at you while you're talking. And then when you leave them, they're just as frustrated as when you got it when they came. Why? Well, because peace doesn't come. It, it's, you, you, can, you, know, you can, you can, you can uh, encourage people, yes, absolutely. Don't, don't misunderstand that. But peace of God develops. I know it because that's what the Bible says. It develops in you, and you're not going to just run and read me, read your little scripture, and go got it. Uh, no. A way of life. I know, I know. I, I shared this, this this morning about my life, my own life. I, 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 I just, I just, I, my, heart, my heart was for God. I just wanted God. I didn't want nothing the world had. I didn't care about no world. And as a result of that, I just, just, Stay with God. Just stay with God. Just stay with God. And he just began, to, you know, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit began to develop. Over time. Over time. You say, how long ago was that? Well, about 40 some years ago. Close to 50. And then we booked. I could not wait that long. <laughs> no, you don't have to wait. Because as you grow, it grows. As, as, you, as you grow. See, see, here's the thing. See, it, it, now watch this. You take a, a baby, a baby has everything that the baby needs. Why? Because all of its faculties, everything is, is growing with the baby. At, at every age, you have everything you need. Why? It's growing with you. If, you, if you're 16, you have 16-year-old joy. You have 16-year-old peace. You have 16-year-old love. Don't you see how this works? As you grow, it grows with you. Increases. It grows with you. So no, no, you don't have to, well, I got to wait for 50 years before I find out anything about this. No. You feed and eat as you grow. It just keeps expanding. I know more about God now. I know more of the things of God that I did when I was 16. It grows, it grows with you. But my point is that I'm sharing with you, these things are not just going to happen. They're not just going to happen. You have to get in there and you have to receive these things. You, that's why you have to receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yes, Lord, I receive you. And then feeding on the Word of God, then it's going to be a growth process. That's what I'm trying to get. And dear God, I'm... I, wow. I tell people, people, people come to Jesus and, and then they run. 
What's wrong with you? Well, they don't really run. The devil make them run because the devil don't want you to stick around long enough to get none of this. I, I know what it is. They don't know it. So where were you? Well, I had to do this. Long-suffering is a fruit. Being able to put up with what you think is wrong. Biggie. Being able to see something that you think is wrong, but keep your mouth shut. You find out where you got long suffering or not. No, I'm telling you. I mean, do, do, you have to, do you have to say something every time you see something that you think is wrong? In fact, what that is is a sign of insecurity. Because you, if you, you don't think much of yourself until you see something that you think is worse than you are. So you go, blab it! Did you see that? No, I didn't. I'm not looking for it. Long suffering is a fruit of the Spirit. And if you don't develop and grow in that, you are going to suffer the consequences of that. See, God, see people, people think God gets mad at them when they don't do what they should do. No, 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 no. God don't get mad at you. You just don't walk in the line of that. That's all. People think, you know, oh, I didn't do this God's mad. No, he's not mad. I don't get mad with people that because of what they do. If you want to go barefoot, fine, I'm not upset. I, I don't get, why, would I, why should I get set up, upset with you because you go barefoot? You the one that's got to cut, cut all them rocks out of your foot. You follow what I'm saying? You know, no, we, we, you know, we have this idea, and we try to do things, and we call it pleasing God. Uh, not really. I mean, in a sense, yeah. But no, if you don't do these things, in other words, if you don't pick up your Bible again, God ain't mad. If you don't pick up your Bible, God is not mad. If you don't go to church, God's not mad. In fact, you couldn't afford for God to get mad at you to begin with. My point is that you are the one that's going to suffer the consequences of what you do. But, but God's not upset with you. He loves you and he'll make all provisions for you, but he is not. We, we think, oh, well, I'm going to do this because I want to make God happy. <clears throat> no, you need to do these things because, you're going to, because it's obedience and develop you and you're going to develop and grow in the grace in, the, in these things. Long suffering. Kindness. You ever see a non-kind person? Goodness. Faithfulness. 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 You don't have to wonder. You don't have to, well, I don't have to worry about so-and-so. I know they'll be on the scene. There are people that you can say that about. And there are some that you can't say that about. Why? What's going to happen? Well, I'm just going to change. No, you're not. You can't. You can develop the fruit of the Spirit by attending to the Word of God, and that will change you. You don't change from the outside. Change does not come from outside. Change comes from inside. Growth comes from within. Real growth comes from the inside, and it comes out. What manifests on the outside, I have been that way on the inside. And it just comes out. See, and when I, when I kindly speak to you, that's not when I got kind. That's a manifestation of my kindness. See, when I treat you with love and respect, that's not the beginning of that. Love and respect has been living on the inside of me. See? That's what you see that is a manifestation of the love and respect that's already on the inside of me. When you are mean, that's not the first time. That's, that's not mean. That, that mean it didn't come from the outside. That meanness that just jumped out is a manifestation of what's on the inside of you. Of the abundance of the, the mouth will, I rest my case. 
No, no, don't, don't. This oops business. You know, people say something, oops. No, the horse is gone. You trying to close the, you close the barn door after the horse is gone. That horse is, that horse, that, I know that's where that horse lives. She lives inside of you. No, really, that's, but that's the truth. You say, well, Pastor, how can I get rid of that? The Word of God, feed on the Word of God and allow the gifts of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit to develop. And it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take some time. And if you're real mean, (laughs) it's going to take a little more time. You know, you know, but, but watch this. Here's what will happen. Here's, here's, here's what God will do for you. When you see things like that, it, it won't bother you. I understand. I know what's going on. When I see when people carry, I, I, I don't, it don't bother me. When I see people cutting up and acting like a fool, it don't bother me in the least. If I have an opportunity to do something to help them move toward Holy Spirit, to get him inside of them so they can start to, they'll do that. If I don't get, if they won't let me do it, I don't do that. But when I see people cut them and act like a fool, don't bother me in the least because I understand, I know what it is. I know there's a devil inside there that he's trying to get out. And every once in a while, you let him out. Yeah. But, but, but God can fix that. Did you ever notice that Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. Did you notice what he does not say? He does not say, if any man hear my voice, open the door and put the devil out. I never, he didn't say that. He said, if you hear my voice, I will come in. It don't bother me who's in there. Because I know when I get in there, don't worry about them. Don't, don't worry about them. I tell you what, get a bunch of Christians to walk in a room where you got a couple of devils. And I bet you they get quiet on you. Get a bunch of Christians, a bunch of loving Christians to walk in a room where you got a couple of devils sitting in there kept carrying on. And just, just, just be there. You don't have to say much. Just be there. And watch how they just kind of... And after a while, they're going to find a reason to leave. You had a conversation. You get to talking about Jesus. If you got some devils that are in that crowd, they're going to find something to do. My point, don't worry about the devil. Don't worry about that devil you got. You can't, get, you can't make him leave. The only thing that can get him out of you is to invite Holy Spirit in and feed on the word of God and allow the spirit, the fruits of the spirit to develop in you. And I guarantee you he's going to leave. And he's got to go. I know. Well, see, remember, well, see many of you remember before you, caught, before you received Holy Spirit. You remember what you were. I don't have, you don't have to ask nobody. You know what you were. Why aren't you still like that? You never told the devil to go anywhere. He wouldn't have gone anyway. But God came in, and because Holy Spirit dominated inside of you, and because you was feeding on God's word, don't you worry, that that trash left. The trash just left. You probably don't even remember the last when the last when you stopped cussing. Probably don't. I don't. You folks said, what happened to the cussing? Your, your mouth used to be like a cesspool. You don't talk like that anymore. Why you don't talk like that? I don't know. I don't remember when he left. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but I'm trying to show you the, the intimacy of the workings of Holy Spirit inside of us developing the fruits of the Spirit. It's an ongoing thing. It just keeps happening. It just keeps happening. And God just keep purging you. And keep purging you. And keep purging you. Stop trying to stop stuff. I just can't. I just can't get this. I can't. I can't give up that pot. Don't worry about the pot. You're looking at the wrong thing. 
Don't worry about the pot. Bring Jesus in. Bring Holy Spirit in. Pot don't bother him. Do you understand how this works? Stop worrying about how bad you were. I've, I've heard that people think, they, they think, oh, I'm just bad. I mean, yeah, of course you're bad. Everybody knows that. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll be the church as soon as I change. You ain't never coming. <laughs> people think like that. They think they think as soon as I get straight. I'm, yeah, straight out in the front of the church. People think they think that they can fix themselves and I get straight and then I'll be the church. No, 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 no. Holy Spirit is here to take up residency inside of you and to purge you by developing the fruit of the Spirit inside of your spirit. That's the way that is done and it takes time to do that. We have the what? We have faithfulness, have long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. I love people that I can depend on. I really like that. People that I, people that I don't know whether they're going to show up or not. Blah, blah, blah. But I like people that I can depend on. I know certain people you know, dear God, they got your back, boy. They got your back. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They got, don't worry. Don't worry about it. They, you, they, they, you, they got your back. That's a wonderful trait. And God likes faithfulness. When God said, but see, see, I found out something about God. God wants every person to be saved. Jesus died so every person can be saved. And when he got somebody that he can talk through them, to the person that needs to be saved. He likes that. People that are faithful, people that are always saying, God, I'm available. I'm, I'm, I got you. I'm, 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 you got me. See, see, God loves that. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. You, you're, always, you, you're always at God's disposal, wherever you are, wherever you are. And you know something I found out? Dear God, I, I learned as I grew older. I tell you what, God, God has no problem. There's not a spot on this earth that God has a problem with. See, we thought that. We, we, we used to think that. We thought, well, God ain't going out there. And are you kidding me? There is, I mean, you can look at the life of Jesus and see that. Amen. God has no problem. And you know what? I don't either. Amen. I go anywhere I want to go. I do. I do. Wherever there's people. I don't care. I go. Because, because this, say, watch this. God wants the person down at the Jew joint, whatever you want to call it. He want them saved. Generally, he wasn't the one down at the church saved. Right. Yes. You understand? And if there's nobody, everybody's scared to go down there, well, the devil have a party with that. Everybody's scared to go down there. I ain't going down there. I'm not going down there. Well, if you're not ready to go, don't. If you don't trust you to go, don't. You're right. You're right. Don't. Because we, don't, we want you to come back with somebody. <laughs> we don't want to see somebody coming out with you. <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? No. Faithfulness is when you have been solidified, you are locked in, you are solid, you can go anywhere. Jesus went everywhere. They got mad at him. Why are you hanging out there with them prostitutes? What's wrong with you? You can't be a man of God. He down there with what we call the riffraff. He right, in the, he right in the middle of them. Wow. Well, how in the world would Mary Magdalene, how could would she have gotten saved if he hadn't hung out where she hung out at? She had all them devils in her. So you know she wasn't at the temple. You understand what I'm saying? See, but see, this, you got to know who you are. And when Holy Spirit is inside of you and the fruit of the Spirit has been and is being developed in you, you can go wherever you need to go, be wherever you need to be, do whatever needs to be done for the sake of getting people to the kingdom. Don't you see how powerful this is? But if you don't have Holy Spirit in you, and you don't understand his works, 
and you don't understand the fruits of the Spirit, that's a then you don't understand. Then you, you're going to miss. You're going to miss this. And that's why it's so important for us to understand this. Now, listen to me real carefully. We're going to shut it down for today. Listen, the first thing to become is become, be, let it become assured, be assured yeah. and understand that God lives inside of me. Yeah. Holy Spirit is inside of me. God, it's, it's, that's the easiest thing in the world. Getting the Holy Spirit is the easiest thing in the world. If you be an evil natural, know how to give good, give good gifts unto your churches, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who do what? Yeah. Ask him. Ask God, ask God. You can ask God, ask God, tell God, God, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I got filled with the Holy Ghost down in my basement, minding my own business, just praying away. So, so, so you, don't have to be, you don't need to be in church to get the Holy Spirit. You can get the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit anywhere, 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 anywhere. So I'm saying, so make sure that you receive him and then feed. You got flowers at home, you got something that grows you know how you take care of and care for it? Yeah. Well, you nurture your spirit the same way. You need the word of God and you need prayer. Yeah. The word of God and prayer. That's going to allow the fruits to develop in your spirit. Those fruits that I just been reading that, those fruits is going to allow for those fruits to develop and grow. Don't try to rush them. Don't try to say, well, I don't know when they're going to. Just keep feeding. Keep feeding. Keep feeding. You don't ever quit. The fruit of the Spirit don't ever stop growing in you. It don't stop. Just keep feeding. Just keep feeding. And you'll, and you'll just keep expanding. And the bigger you get, the more effective you will be in bringing others into the kingdom. Are you ready for that? Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Holy Spirit yes. is the key to this. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We honor you here. You are present with us. We were not left alone. You're here. You're here. You're here living inside of us. Hallelujah. To do the work of the ministry. We have the power of God because of the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us. Jesus, you promised us that you would never leave us. You would not forsake us, but that you'd always be with us. And you are with us in, in by way of Holy Spirit living inside of us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You live inside of us and we honor your presence. And we trust you to guide us. We trust you to counsel us. We trust you to help us. We trust you to show us the things that we don't know. We trust you to give counsel unto us. Holy Spirit, thank you for your ministry. Oh, 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 hallelujah. 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 Well, let's just pray a few. Let's pray. We ain't in no, I know, anybody didn't know her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Praise your name, Father. Oh, Rubosa, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for not leaving us alone. Thank you for giving us your vision. You declared that the earth would be filled with your glory. And God, you're using us. You're using us. You've called us out of darkness into this marvelous light to show us the way. Oh, my Father, my Father, my Father, my Father. We desire you. We desire you, oh, Lord. We desire you. We desire you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for showing us. Thank you for making a way for us. Thank you. Thank you for fulfillment of our calling. You've called us. You've called us with a holy calling. And the calling is not according to our works, but according to your purpose and your grace. Your care for people, oh God, motivates us to go out to hold up the bloodstained band of Jesus Christ to touch people's lives. Oh, gracious Father, you are not willing that any should perish, but you say that your desire is that all men come through repentance. You're not willing that one person be lost, but your desire is for all men to be saved. Oh, gracious Father. Oh, gracious Father. Oh, gracious Father. Teach us 
this simplicity of this journey. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to be effective every day in our ministry and in our calling. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And we'll give you all the praise, Father. We'll give you all the glory. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all the people of God said, God bless you. God bless you. Let's go get it done. Let's go get it done. Let's go get it done. Hallelujah.